So this is definitely nothing new to anybody who spent any time in the filmmaking community on social media, YouTube, whatever. You're going to see a lot of content surrounding vintage lenses. And it's because a lot of the characteristics that we get out of those older film lenses are things that we desire today, especially with digital sensors, trying to make things a little less crunchy, a little less sharp. So last fall, I got in contact with Photodeox. They make a lot of lens adapters, filters, and adapters with filters built in. And I've really been a fan of their, their products for a long time. So we're working out how to kind of collaborate on things. And at the time, I really didn't have a lot of Fuji lenses. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll get some adapters that can help me put vintage lenses on the Fuji. It's another great place for me to play around with vintage glass. They recommended a adapter that not only can adapt the lenses, it's also able to adjust the flange distance so you can use any type of lens on it as long as you're adapting to that like an M mount that the adapter is based on. We get this collaboration in the works and immediately I go, I don't really have any lenses right now that are Monoto MD or M42. So I immediately order the Helios on eBay. And I was so lucky that for around $45 or something, I got a perfect Helios. And I've absolutely been impressed with the image out of it. Seeing how good it is, it's, I'm ashamed to say that it was actually the, the first Helios I'd ever owned. I slept on that for a long time and it is a really wonderful lens. So I order the Helios and I'm looking at different lenses on eBay and I, I don't really trust eBay. I've been kind of a little bit burned before there. So I'm thinking, hey, I'll see what's on Facebook Marketplace. Right away, I find a listing for a bunch of lenses. There's a Super Tacomar, some Minoltas, the, their primes, their zooms. There's kind of everything under the sun, even some Canon FD stuff. Like I'm, I'm really stoked that like there's, I think 12 lenses in the kit and it was listed for $90. So I messaged him right away, asked if they were still available. He said yes. So I wake up at 5.30 in the morning because it was really the only time he was available and that I was available. And I jump on the first ferry and go pick up these lenses. Now in the mix of all of these actual lenses that I'm excited to get, there's a weird quirky little silver barrel with the brand lights on it. Essentially, this is a 90 mil f2.5 Leica lens, and I don't know how I'm going to make it work, but it's too, too enticing for me to pass up. So we get there, I look at everything, it really was only $90, and I get back home and start playing around and going and testing out all these lenses and having a really good time. Fast forward to like early March or something, and I'm still trying to figure out how to get this projector lens onto any of my cameras. I don't care which one at this point. I just want to try it out. It's too interesting to not try to figure out how to get it on a camera and see what kind of image it can produce. So I get this aha moment that, oh wait, the Pronto adapter came with a, like a mount cap for Leica M. If I drill a hole in that, I could potentially glue the Leica lens onto it. So I get into the workshop and I find a hole saw that looks pretty close to the same size, drill a hole in this mount and get everything kind of tidied up and in a way that it can work for putting the lens inside it. I get it all set up and then I realize I have no idea what flange distance this lens actually is. Of course, I go upstairs, grab the Fuji, put the adapter on it and, and try it out and it's cannot hit any focus because it's the wrong flange distance. And I go, okay, whatever. I'm not gonna give up on this. There must be a way still. And so I think, okay, well, we've got the actual like mounting for Leica M onto the Fuji setup. Now I just need to figure out how to get the actual projector lens on that. And I find an old Canon FD rear lens cap. And they're like, three quarters of an inch long, and that will give me room to slide the, the barrel of the projector lens back and forth to adjust for the flange distance. And then the Pronto adapter obviously can make up the difference and perform autofocus if, if that's what we're going for. So the last hole saw I used was just to get the projector lens onto 
the cap for the Leica mount, and it wasn't really meant to go through that Leica body cap. So I needed to get a different hole saw, and I don't have a hole saw that's the right size. So I pull out a Dremel, and I start Dremeling it out, trying to get it to be a good fit. And so that all goes perfectly. Everything looks great. And I step back and I look at this lens, essentially, that is now hopefully functional. And I'm starting to get really excited because I've created something now that I have no idea what to expect from it. I don't think I've really seen anybody do this before, especially not on a Fuji. I used a little bit of electrical tape to have a little bit of grip so it can't slide easily and start pointing it at things. And the Pronto adapter is working the same as it has been with any other vintage lens that I've tried so far. And, and at this point, I, I don't even blink. I run outside and start trying to test it. And it's not the nicest day outside. It's kind of a typical early spring day in Western Canada. And if you live out here like I do, you know it's pretty hard to make anything look that good. But immediately I can tell that there's a lot of beauty and character coming out of this lens. And not only that it works fine and I can, you know, set a single point autofocus quickly with the Pronto adapter and then kind of do a movement and reset, but I can also move the lens in the actual mount to an extent that it can produce more of a macro image and even kind of tilt shift, which is really neat. So over the next few months, I, I keep kind of testing it out and it's not necessarily a professional lens system. There's, there isn't really another means of focusing and, and making something like this in your own shop definitely is not a really viable solution for creating something that you should be trying to make money with as your profession. But if you're anything like me and you've been doing this for work for a long time, Things can kind of get stale sometimes and creativity needs to develop in ways that are kind of outside of the norm. So for me, that can be photography like astrophotography and landscapes or YouTube where I can do something different and creative and, you know, even just vintage lenses in general. I, I don't think I really use them much in productions, but I like having that ability to achieve that look if it's asked for. And then the rest of it comes down to creating something and, and feeling creative in the moment and getting outside of a little bit of a rut and trying something new. And this Leica lens is that to a T. You know, it's, it's my B cam right now filming me on a slider. I can't really say anything more about the image that comes out of the lens because it becomes really personal to, to you and it becomes a real difficult thing to say that this solves a problem that you may or may not have, or it creates an image that you can't get with another piece of glass. But I do want to use this video and, and show the quality that can come from something that absolutely has no business even being a lens. Because if you create with the intention of, of doing something that you may not even like the result, it really opens up your mind to the ways that creativity flows through us. And I think that that is essential as any kind of creative person to really push our boundaries. And if you're not going outside of your comfort zones, then you start having a bigger existential issue of what you're doing and, and where you're trying to go in life. And, and I have had lots of struggles as a creative professional dealing with, you know, imposter syndrome and gear acquisition in the last 20 years. And the thing that's definitely helped me the most is just playing and doing things for the sake of having fun and maybe failing altogether. Like this absolutely could have failed because I had no input from the external world on how to do it. I didn't have a tutorial that showed me how to do this. I just went, hey, I think I can glue this shit together and make a lens and play. I definitely owe a lot of this experimenting to the fact that this Pronto adapter can give me all of that flexibility. And I still enjoy it outside of this because I'm able to be like get future adapters down the line. Like hopefully I can get an FD to a Leica M adapter and I can play around with that. But the Takamar and the Minoltas and the Helios, they've all brought something super cool to what I've been doing for myself. And, and even on some shoots where I just like 
shot the hell out of it with the cinema cameras and I just want to shut off those systems and save some battery for when I know I really need it. But the Fuji's behind me, so I'll grab it out of the bag and throw the Helios on. But the real unique part here is how having a system that can adapt your flange distance improve macro performance and you know adapt almost any type of lens to it it creates an opportunity to play and to be creative again and we're losing that real quickly in chasing the best lens for this the best cinema camera the best hybrid the best set of cine primes the best lens the best monitor like we're just focused on the best if we can just step back from chasing perfection all the time will free ourselves to be creative again and that's why we picked up these tools in the first place.